What's up guys and welcome back to the AC Milan career mode here on FC24. We are now into season number two. This is going to be the first episode. So we are going to get into the summer transfer window just shortly. Luckily for us, the board did want us back from the last season. We did end up winning the Serie A. We did not end, we end up winning the Champions League or Europa League. If you're just now watching this career mode for the first time, please be sure to go check out those other videos and give them a like while you're at it. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. But let's go ahead and get into season number two. We're going to have uh, a lot of things to do in this episode, mostly getting rid of a lot of players, either by loaning them out or by actually selling them on. Our team is extremely, extremely full. We're going to kind of go through each position and uh, I'll let you know what I'm thinking about as far as transfer plans. Just before we go over the exact plans, I'm going to let you see our budget is 156 million. So we're going to have a lot of money to work with, especially with some of the outgoing players that we're going to have uh, leaving the club. Last year, I said that I didn't want to spend any more than like 50 million on any one player. We did about that with Elise and with Jimenez. We spent about 50 million for both of them. But for this season, since we did end up winning the Serie A and since we did progress so far in the Europa League and we're going to be in the Champions League again this year, I'm going to allow us to spend a lot more money, especially with the players we're going to have outgoing. So first up, we're going to talk about the big big name players, Mike Mignon, Teo Hernandez, Rafael Leal. I don't really want to get rid of any of them, but except for Mike Mignon, I am going to let him go uh, to a, another club. I'm going to add him to the transfer list and I'm going to hope to get a pretty sizable offer in for him so that we can go after one goalkeeper in particular, and that is going to be Diogo Costa of FC Porto. Really want to bring him to AC Milan and give him a chance to play on the big stage for a bigger club uh, than FC Porto. No offense to any FC Porto fans, but that's just the way it is. Uh, with Teo Hernandez and with Rafael Leal, I don't plan on selling them, but if we get a big offer in from a club like Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man City, maybe PSG, we would consider the offer. Um, I know Rafael Leal is linked with a lot of clubs in real life. Teo Hernandez, I haven't heard as many links uh, with him, but I'm sure if there's a big club that comes in for him, he might be enticed to leave. But as far as the rest of the club, I'm pretty much comfortable with keeping most of them. Tamori, I don't want to go anywhere. Benacer, I would I would be okay with letting him go, but I, I do like him. Uh, Elise and Jimenez, we brought in last season. They're not going anywhere. Chukweze, I am okay with letting him go if we want to bring in someone just a little bit younger uh, to the rotation side of things, but we'll see how that goes. As far as midfield, let's kind of go position by position now. So we already talked about goalkeeper we're going to bring in. Um, Diogo Costa from FC Porto. Left back, prefer to keep Hernandez. We'll kind of see what goes on from there. We're going to loan a lot of players out. We will be adding them throughout the video um, on the loan list. As far as center back goes, Tamori is going to stay. Kalulu is going to stay, but I might use him as a backup slash backup right back. He's going to be kind of interchangeable in those two positions. But what I want to do is bring in a left-sided center back. And I do have one player in mind that was somebody actually left a comment about them at the end of the last video. So... Um, we're pr probably going to bring in a left-sided center back. Tamori and Kalulu are both right-footed, as well as Tia. Tia is likely going to lead the club, at least on loan. I might let him go out on a transfer. We'll see. Because we brought in Jarrell Hato in the, last ep or in the last season as well, and I want to keep him as our backup. So we have Tamori, we have Kalulu, we have Hato. Those will be the three for sure that are going to stay. Tia is probably going to leave out on loan or transfer. Mateo Gabia, we are going to transfer away. I just don't feel like I'm ever going to get to the point where I want to use him. Uh, with Pellegrino, we are going to loan. Simich, we will loan. And then Joris Kuypers is our Youth Academy prospect that we brought in last season. We will loan him out again as well. At right back, I'm perfectly keep fine uh, keeping Calabria, but I actually want to leave that up to you guys. If you guys feel like I should move on from Calabria and go for a more world-class type right back, then I'm okay with doing that. Uh, Florenzi, his contract's going to be expiring. We're going to let him go out uh, on a transfer as long as we can get a club to bring a good offer in for him. Terracciano, not sure if I'm butchering that name or not. He will be our backup right back. And then we will let out these other players go out on loan. Midfield is where we're going to have a lot of issues this year as far as rotations because we've got so many great players. Uh, Krunic will be listing for the transfer list. He's perfect. I'm perfectly fine with letting him go. But we, besides him, we've got Benacer, we've got Loftus Chief, we've got Reinders, Adley Pobega, Musa. And then now we're going to be bringing back a couple players into Ketelaire and Daniel Maldini. We'll let Maldini go out on loan again. But De Ketelaire played so well for Atalanta last year, and he's a player that I'm definitely planning on keeping and using in our squad. So midfield, we're kind of set. Uh, we definitely don't need to bring in any players unless you guys really feel like there's a midfielder we need to bring into the club uh, to improve the squad. But besides that, I mean, the only thing I can think of is we need one player to go out 
And it's going to be between Adley and Yunus Musa, uh, who we transfer out or let loan out. I'm thinking about loaning out Yunus Musa because he didn't get a lot of play time. So I'm going to put him on the loan list for now. But if you guys feel differently about it, then let me know. We might get offers for him before you even had the chance to decide. So we'll see. Out on the wings, we're going to have an interesting scenario going on there. So Alicia is going to start out on the right for us, Leao on the left. But obviously, if Leao leaves, that might change. We've still got Pulisic, who uh, will be fit very soon. Did have a broken toe injury at the end of last year. I do plan on keeping him. He is solid, and he's definitely a very good backup player. I just don't know if he's going to be happy with a back, but with a backup role. Uh, we brought back Solid Makers from loan. He's probably going to get a good amount of game time, to be fair, which is why I'm thinking about uh, transferring out Chukweze just because we never really used him and I just don't feel like we're ever really going to get to the point where we want to. Uh, we're definitely going to keep Romero who looks like a very promising player but we're going to loan him out as well as Traore. At the striker position we've got Olivier Giroud who looks like he's going to be retiring at the end of the season and in real life he's already made a move to uh, LAFC I believe in the MLS or at least going to plan on uh, moving to the MLS at the end of this season in real life so we're going to put him on the transfer list hopefully get an offer in for him as well as Divac Origi, 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 not sure how to say that name. Uh, we're going to we're gonna put him on the transfer list. A Liverpool legend, but unfortunately for AC Milan, he just never really developed. Luka Jovic is already moving on to Atalanta once the, January, or once the summer transfer window opens. So that will leave us with these four players right here at the bottom. Jimenez not going anywhere. Okafor not going anywhere. Uh, Colombo we are going to let out, uh, let go out on loan. And then Lazetic, we will probably just transfer out. I just don't ever see him getting into the club with how young our other strikers are so that's kind of where we're at with the team and with the transfers and loans that i already have in mind let's go look at some of the players that we want to bring in so i already talked about how we're going to bring diogo costa in we're probably going to do that as soon as we can get manyan sold um if costa for whatever reason doesn't work out i've got ramsdale here obviously we know how good he is with arsenal me being an arsenal fan i try not to sign arsenal players too much uh anymore because i've done so in the past in the career mode so I would prefer not to have to do that, but he's a very good goalkeeper in the game. So if we do, we do. As far as center backs go, I want to bring in Alessandro Bu Buongiorno, Buongiorno, I believe is how you would say that name. Left-sided center back, 6'3", 189, very, very physical defender. Not exactly the paciest, but I'm not too worried about it because I mean his pace is decent enough. Um, and with left back being Teo Hernandez, we've got cover there for pace. So I'm going to bring him in right now, actually. Uh, he's going to cost between 40 to $50 million, which is perfectly fine with me. And I feel like he's a very, very good signing for that left center back position. It looks like we're going to be able to sign him up on 44000 a week with a couple of signing bonuses and some uh, an appearance bonus as well. You're going to notice with this deal, we included something very, very interesting once we get to this. So we got a, it's a swap deal, actually, with Malik Tia and $22 million sending over to Torino for him. So only spending $20 million and getting rid of a player that we were already planning on selling anyways is going to work out very well for us. That's a deal done. At left back, even last season, I thought about bringing in a player as a backup, which would, be, would have been Parisi, Trufea, or Colwell. I'm still thinking about doing that, but it's not a priority for me right now. Teo Hernandez was able to play like every game last season. Um, so I'm not too worried about it, and especially with how many players we have in defense. Again, not too worried about it right now, but I, I really am thinking about bringing in Parisi, especially if Teo Hernandez leaves for whatever reason. Breezy would be a great replacement. Um, not quite as high overall, but could get there eventually. In midfield, like I said, there's not really any reason for us to go after another player unless you guys really want me to, but we just won't have the room for them in the team unless we move on from some other players. So you guys are going to have to let me know about that in the comments down below. Zubamendi has been linked with AC Milan, as well as a lot of other clubs in Europe. Um, so he would be a very, very good player to bring in, especially if we let go of Benacer. He would be the new CDM for us. But uh, as of right now, again, not... Not someone I'm interested in bringing in, as well as Samuel Ritchie from Torino. But since we just made a deal, probably not going to go after him. We've got a lot of other center mids on the list still from last season, but we never ended up bringing anybody in. Uh, and then we've still got a lot of strikers from last season, but we're also not planning on bringing any of them in. So I'm just going to leave them uh, on the short list for now. But if you could, please, in the comments down below, let me know some wingers that you could potentially see us bringing in if Leao ends up leaving left backs you want me to bring in or if you want me to bring in anybody in those central mid positions as well as well as right back i did not scout any right backs so far uh, just because calabria is still with the squad so uh yeah leave your comments down below about that we got an offer in from mateo gabbia from sassuolo an in a uh, league rival of ours but i'm okay with letting him go there mateo gabbia is not necessarily the greatest player i mean he's decent but 
Uh, never going to scare us too much. We are going to ask for 11 million. And then if they want to go back down to 9.8, that's fine. We did get an offer in for Loftus Cheek as well. As of right now, I'm not planning on selling him, but him making a move to Liverpool, back to the Premier League, back to England, kind of would make sense for him. So I'm going to reject for now just because I do want to keep him. But and again, a player that, you know, if you guys want me to let him go back to England, if we get another offer for him, uh, then we would. Sassuolo didn't want to pay any more than $9.8 million for Gabia, so we're just going to let him go. We're perfectly fine with that. We got an offer from Mignon from Leverkusen with a swap deal for Ezekiel Palacios. Oh, man, that's actually a pretty good deal. I would ask for more money uh, if we did accept a deal like that, but I definitely would be interested in it. I mean, Palacios is insane, but we still, again, don't need midfield players as of right now, so we'll reject for now. We got an offer in from Spurs for $108 million for Benacer. We could make a lot of money off of a transfer out for Benacer, up to $150 million, they're saying. But I don't really feel like letting him go. We're going to reject that one for now. We've got an offer in from Newcastle for Kroonich for $18.5 million, and I will happily accept that. And another offer for Kroonich from Galatasaray this time. Again, the same amount, so we'll happily accept that one as well. And then we're getting loan offers in as well for some of the other players, some of the lower overall players. I'm probably not going to show all of them, um, but at the end of the transfer window, I'll show you everybody that moved away from the club, either loan or transfers. Divac Origi was uh, on loan at Nottingham Forest this past season and is so in real life right now. They're willing to offer $6.5 million for him. I'll take that. It said we can only give up to, get up to $7 million for him, so that works out perfectly. We've got a loan move here from Fiorentina for Yunus Musa, and I actually feel like that's a pretty decent club for him to go to where he could probably get some game time um, and then come back to the club later on if we if we feel like needing him later. Uh, Bayern Munich come in with a deal for Magnon, another swab deal, this time up Meccano plus some cash for Magnon, which is another great deal. I mean, it's hard to pass up on deals like this, but I think I would rather just have the money rather than the player, and then we could go get the player later on. Ah, Yeah, it's tough, but I'm going to reject this one as well, even though Alpha Meccano is an insanely good player. Kronich ended up making his move to Galatasaray for $18.5 million. We got an A for that deal. Perfect to get him off the books and get some cash in for him. And we've got a loan deal here for Joris Kuyper from Sassuolo. We'll happily accept as well. But an even better offer here from Ajax for Joris Kuyper. I'd much rather him go there, especially seeing as though he's a boy from the Netherlands. We've got another offer in here from, oh, Salernitana for a goalkeeper. We'll let him go. And then Magnan, another offer in here. This time it is going to be Arsenal coming in from Mike Magnan. Not happy with Ramsdale, not happy with Raya. $103 million is what they're offering. We will negotiate, actually delegate for now to get, I mean, as much as like 130 is what it said we could get. I want a little bit more, so we'll go 110 as the bottom line, but if they give us an offer like that, we'll let him go for sure. We ended up getting a couple interesting offers here for Tamori and for Calabria. Tamori is a swap deal from Leipzig with Schlager involved in it. I'm definitely not really interested in that one at all, and I don't want Tamori to move on. The Calabria deal would be interesting, but I don't really want to move him to Juventus, so I'm going to reject that one. But looks like we could get about $30 million for Calabria if we did move on from him, so... Keep that in mind if we ever get to the point where we need more finances. But I don't think we're going to need that at any point. We've got $200 million right now. And as of right now, also only one more move, major move that we want to make with a goalie. And we're going to be able to afford it for sure. Wow. It looks like Arsenal have said that they are willing to pay $130 million for Mike Magnon, which I feel like is a completely unrealistic transfer. I don't think a goalkeeper would ever go for that much, especially, I mean, Mike Mignon's good, don't get me wrong, but he's he's not that good. Um, so yeah, that's pretty crazy. Uh, we'll happily accept it. Thank you, Arsenal, for your money. And here it is. It looks like Mike Mignon is officially leaving AC Milan. 130 million, though, to Arsenal is, again, a deal that I'm just, one, mind blown by, but two, perfectly happy with him leaving. It looks like we're only going to get a B rating for that. Could have got 146 million, apparently, but... That's going to open up the room on the uh, squad hub for us to bring in a player, of course, that I told you about. We've got, after that deal, $324 million in the budget. So uh, I think this deal is going to be able to go through pretty smoothly. Let's go ahead and go get our man, Diogo Costa. I think one of the things I like most about this deal is that Diogo Costa is only 24 years old. So he is going to be able to continue to grow into potentially a 90 overall goalkeeper at some point. I mean, Mignon is already there, so we could have kept him um, and he probably would have got there. But... 
as you guys, if you guys watch the episodes, um, I'm actually going to accept this 84.7 million, by the way. Uh, if you guys watched the episodes of the first season, Magnan just, he wasn't great. I'll be honest. I mean, he was good. He was good at times. He was decent at other times, but I felt like a lot of the times he was not making saves that I felt like he should be able to make. So again, 89 overall for Magnan, dropping down to 85 for Costa. We're also dropping down five years in age. So again, it's not, it's not too big of a deal. Plus with Costa, I mean, I'm going to give him an important role. He's probably going to ask for crucial, but he's going to be much cheaper on the wage bill. So it's not that bad of a deal. Plus Costa, I think, can play up to that ability, whereas Magnan was kind of playing down a little bit. So we're going to accept this signing bonuses and this wage and just get the, get the deal done. So Diogo Costa, welcome to AC Milan. And it looks like Chukweze had a release clause of 58.6 million, and Juventus have gone ahead and paid that. I don't know if that's above or below his market value. I would assume it's around exactly that, actually. So it's most certainly above his market value, almost 20 million above his market value. And I think even if we try to sell him on our own, we couldn't make 58.6 million. I know he's going to a rival in Juventus, but I think honestly that's not a bad place for him to go. So I'm okay with him going there for 58.6 million here in just a few days. Oh man, a big offer coming in. Chukwese also got his uh, release clause met by Chelsea, which is interesting. But Benacer, a deal from Real Madrid coming in for $107 million. We could get a lot more, obviously. I'm going to reject for now. Again, please be sure to leave your comments. Let me know. I, I don't want to break the team up too much. Like, too much. Like, I don't want to get rid of Magnan, Hernandez, Benacer, and Leal all at the same time. I just don't think that's realistic. I don't think the club would go for that, even if we could bring in, you know, half a billion dollars for those four players. So I'm not going to do that. If we get rid of Teo Hernandez, Benacer, or Leal, it'll probably only be one more of them. So again, you guys have to leave your comments on that. We've got plenty of backups for those positions, so we're not you know, in trouble if one of those players wants to go. So let's go ahead and get into this game against uh, Tottenham. We are going to simulate all preseason games. We're in the European Shield. Looks like we're going to have Tottenham and then an unknown team. And then... Uh, Someone else I didn't even notice. I got sidetracked by Chukweze moving on to Juventus for 58.6 million. We're going to get a D rating for that. But all right, so match day against Spurs. I'm sure they're going to put out a pretty good lineup. Jonathan David at top for them, a player we thought about bringing in. Yeah, I mean, that's Spurs lineup in real life, basically, with Jonathan David added. Um, we obviously know Spurs are a very, very good team, but can we beat them? Quick sim. Our team should be better in theory. And we do get a 1 0 win over them. And honestly, the thing I'm happy about the most about this result is that we didn't get any injuries, so that's always good to see. Bayern coming in for Christian Pulisic, a deal that I feel like isn't completely unrealistic. I, I feel like he's a player that they might go after at some point in his career, or maybe he's been linked with him before since he was at Dortmund. I'm not too sure, but I'm going to reject that offer. I'm perfectly fine with keeping him around, especially, I mean, he's going to be a rotated player for us, like a rotational player for us, but if Elise or Leal gets hurt, He's going to be up next, so I would love to keep him instead of letting him go. Luca Romero ended up making a move to Brentford for a one-year loan. I think that is a fantastic club for him to go to. He's already 74 overall at just 19 years old, so if he has a really good season there, he could grow up to maybe an 80 overall. Next game up is against Granada. That was a team I couldn't think of. They've got you know a few decent players in there, a few notable players, but a team that we should be handling. But we are playing our fully rotated lineup here. Sporty yellow and goal, lots of rotations. You can see the names of the players there. So uh, Reinders is actually out injured. If you notice that we haven't played him yet, we didn't, ended up getting a 3-0 win. Okafor, De Ketelaire, and Benacer finishing them off 3-0. So, so far, two clean sheets throughout our first two games. Four goals scored. We're pretty much dominating our competition. We're going to have Borussia Mönchengladbach up next. And we're also going to be into the month of July, final month. Actually, maybe month of August. My bad. Final month of the summer transfer window. A transfer offer in for Kalulu from PSG, which is definitely not an unrealistic move, especially since Kalulu is a French player. But like I said, we're going to happily reject that one since we're planning on using Kalulu as a full-time backup. And last game of the preseason tournament is against Munch and Gladbach, like I said. Pretty good uh, squad that they got there, especially Kone in midfield, a player that we've thought about bringing in uh, in multiple different career modes so far. But... First team lineup back into the game. Let's see what we can do in the quick sim. Another clean sheet. Rafael Leal and Jimenez scoring this time. And again, no injuries. So we should be going into the first game of the season without any injuries and with our full starting 11. As you can see, we are now here to our first game 
in the Serie A. It is very late in the month of August now, so um, we won't be able to fully scout a lot of players that you guys might suggest for the final uh, week. You know, it usually takes like 12 to 18 days to scout players, so we're going to need to find them out. So this game we're going to play, um, and then after that we won't simulate any further so we can give ourselves at least a little bit of time to scout. So yeah, please be sure to leave your comments. Please be sure to like the video. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. But yeah, leave your comments about players you want me to bring in. Let's go ahead and hop into this first game, an away game against Frosinone. Frosinone finished down in the bottom part of the table last year. I believe they were in like 15th or 16th. I mean, they were just out of the relegation zone. Might have even been 17th. So this is a team that we should be beating. We're going to go with our full strength 11. Pobega is going to get the start in midfield. Juan Giorno is going to start at the left center back position. But besides that, and then, I, of course, Diogo Costa and goal. Besides that, though, uh, pretty much the full strength 11 that we've been using for a long time now. So let's get into it. Here Hernandez with a throw in to Rafael Leal. Gets a ball over to Pobega, who's going to go for a shot. I mean, wildly powerful shot that was. Here Hernandez looking inside for Rafael Leal. Decent touch. Good shot. Blocked away, and it looks like it's going to be a handball on Teo Hernandez and a free kick for the opposition. Hernandez inside to Lotus Cheek. Lotus Cheek had to get it out early, was under a lot of pressure. Calabria pushing forward. Calabria not the fastest, but we'll find a pass back inside to Pobega. We're going to look for Lotus Cheek. Wow, what a save from the Frosnone goalkeeper. 15 minutes gone. We've been the much better side attacking wise, but they've been pretty good defensively. Gonna look for a cross inside. Nearly found one of our players, but it'll be cleared away. And Sarah, another good tackle. Lot this cheek this time. Gonna have Jimenez. Gonna go for an early shot again, but this one will end up with Rafael Leal, who will find the back of the net. Defender not closing down on him quick enough. And the goalkeeper just standing still. 24 minutes gone, a 1 0 lead. This is a good sign of things to come. Jimenez, not a great shot, but the ball luckily falls to Leal in a great position, and he's wide open. His cheek. Wow, great ball over the top to Elise. We're going to look inside early for Jimenez. Not a great shot. I, I like the effort, though, but just not, you know, anywhere close to the target. Wow, Frozen on it, breaking down this wing. This player is extremely fast. Tamori trying to get back into a good position. They find a, get a, they find a good pass off, and Diogo Costa makes an incredible save. Does Mignon make that save? I don't know, but it was a really good one nonetheless. They take this corner short. Fleming inside to Sanchez. Tamori doing enough to knock that player off balance and sending that shot well wide. Teo Hernandez over the top to lay out. Can he get around the defender? He can't. Wow, the defender does well. Uh, we're nearing the end of the first half here. Frosnone not able to push forward very well just besides that one opportunity. But do they find one here? Giorno, kind of out of position now. Ref. Okay, maybe you don't need to blow your whistle just yet. Arui, Sanchez. Still just cannot get the ball off of them. Teo Hernandez nearly giving up a foul in the box. Another one. This time getting a foot in, and it's going out for a corner. But it, Oh, and it looks like the ref will allow it. 50 minutes gone now. Even though only one minute of added time was allotted. A good header in, a good save by Costa, and that will be the end of the first half. Teo Hernandez here inside to Jimenez. Jimenez lays the ball off nicely to Loftus Cheek, who finds Pobega. Easy finish. Great passing by the boys. Pobega is going to end up with the goal, but an assist from Loftus Cheek and a great pass from Jimenez before that leads to that goal, and it's 2 0 here early on in the second half. Pobega, what a ball through the middle to Lotus Cheek. Who will find Jimenez? Easy, 3 0. Yeah, it's just crazy. I noticed a lot of the lower level teams in the Serie A. I mean, I don't know if it's just the AI or, you know, obviously they're lower overalls, but they play very, very, very far back. Again, I mean, just players inside the box when they don't need to be. You know, they should play a little bit higher of a line. I don't know if that's a slider issue or what. If you guys want me to adjust the sliders as well. Let me know. I've been playing on ultimate difficulty with player base difficulty on for the entirety of the career mode as well as career modes in the past. Um, and the only sliders that are different are the injury frequency is turned up. So besides that, it's all 50s. But sometimes it feels just too easy. Sometimes it's very difficult. So let me know about that. 
77 minutes gone here. We're going to make a few subs. A couple of players that were out on loan last season making their debuts this season. De Ketelaire and Salamakers on for Pobega and Elise. As well as Reinders coming on from, for Loftus Cheek. Reinders was injured at the end of last season, so this is his first game time in several months. What a pass from Reinders down here to Leal. Leal looking for the cross. Solid makers at the back post. 80 minutes gone now. Just two minutes into his debut this season. Solid makers finds a way to score at the back post thanks to Rafael Leal in that beautiful cross. Teo Hernandez fighting on the edge of the box. Trying to get that ball away. Tamori, though, finds a way to get to that cross and heads it away. 85 minutes gone now. I don't expect too much more to be happening except a fantastic through ball again. To Rafael Leal. Can he make it five? Oh, yes, he can. What a game for us today, and what a terrible, terrible first game for Frozenone this season. And the referee will blow their whistle. That'll be the end of this game. I mean, like I said, it, sometimes it feels really easy playing on ultimate difficulty, even with player based difficulty on. I mean, this team is just really bad, so this is kind of a, a one off scenario. We don't win a lot of games 5 0. This might actually be one of our biggest wins of the career mode so far, so. Uh, yeah, like I said, please be sure to leave your comments about sliders. We can't slow it down too much. I do play on only four minute halves just for recording purposes. So uh, keep that in mind whenever you're suggesting the sliders. But I looked at the OS community sliders before. I've looked at some other ones. Keeping it on 50, you know, across the board kind of feels good. But yeah, let me know. And that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please be sure to like the video. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. In the next episode, we will get through the end of the summer transfer window, and I will show you guys all the transfers we made as well as a lot of the bigger clubs and what transfers they made. So please be sure to uh, like the video for that and get ready for that second episode, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.